Lawrence, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want you to know that I am proud and excited and just honored to be a candidate for the U.S. Congress in the 8th District. I, I'm very grateful to Jim Moran for his hard, years of hard work, for his passion, his principles. Uh, he leaves very large shoes to fill. You know, the, my decision to run for the seat was easy. I cannot imagine a more necessary time to serve. And this is a position from which we can make a real difference in people's lives. You know, we, I believe we're each put on this earth to create something larger than ourselves, to serve others. And for me, this is that answer today. You know, we have great challenges before us that are frightening, but the solutions are also achievable and real as long as we have the courage to lead and the courage to act. You know, I'm dismayed by the ever-increasing disparity between the very rich and all the rest of us. I've always believed that America is about opportunity, that if you work hard, if you get a good education, that, and you play by the rules, that you and your family will have a real chance to grow. But now the deck is stacked for the very few that have all the power and the money, and for almost everybody else, where the path for opportunity is steeper and harder than ever before. But I believe that we can create real new paths for the more than 100 million Americans who are stuck or declining standards of living. 16 million U.S. children, 22% of all children live in families below the poverty line. We can raise the minimum wage. And I was thrilled by the number of American businesses in the last week who raised the minimum wage to $10.10 on their own. We can increase the earned income tax credit, and we must. And every business should adopt the president's best practices for hiring and recruiting the long-term unemployed. You know, I have three amazing daughters, a wonderful wife that most of you know, and my mother and my grandmother were exceptional leaders on their own. Yet the glass ceiling and the crack foundation in business, in government, in politics, way too stubborn. We need to enact paid family and medical leave. I'm among, <laughs> worth the applauding, please. Uh, I think I'm among the very first automobile dealers in the country to institute paid maternity leave for our employees. And we certainly need to move forward with the Fair Paycheck Act. And as Republicans continue to attack the woman's right to choose, we must stand strong. And you know, my family business has more than 300 employees. And easily, more than half of them were born outside the United States. Uh, my favorite employee is Manuel Arias. He's been on the Appalachian Trail with me more than a dozen times. And Manuel, in his village in El Salvador, was given the choice between joining a death squad or being killed by it. In the middle of that night, he fled, uh, took hitchhiked, walked, etc., across Central America and Mexico, and made it here. But for years he lived without papers, struggling to get by in the shadow economy. We have an absolute moral responsibility to create a meaningful path of citizenship for the hundreds, the millions, hundreds of thousands, of the millions of Americans who've come here to work hard, keep our economy strong, and just to survive. You know, the greatest crisis we face, I deeply believe this, is global warming. The tragedies that are about to come upon us are of unimaginable proportion. Billions of people forced to relocate, sea level rise, food shortages, drought, extreme weather, and much, much more. And yet we have millions of Americans who don't even believe that climate change is real because of Fox News and despite all overwhelming mm -hmm. scientific evidence. I am determined to go be a forceful champion in Washington, D.C. to fight against climate change to look at the very best solutions, from a carbon tax to everything else to make this better. And for 40 years, I've led the family business. We've created hundreds of jobs, we've served tens of thousands of customers, and we've tried to invest heavily in the community. I've even written a few radio ads along the way. <laughs> As a Virginia's Lieutenant Governor for eight years, I led the fight to improve the lives of Virginians with disabilities. I chaired a commission on sexual assault that enacted landmark legislation for child victims of sexual abuse. And I fought successfully to hold deadbeat dads responsible for their child support payments. 
know, in 2008, in November, the President asked me to lead the transition team for the Department of Commerce. So for 77 days, this is when I learned to drink coffee. <laughs> for 77 days, about 18 hours a day, um, we put together his first term plan for the International Trade Administration, for the Census, for NOAA, for the International for um, Patent and Trade Office, and the like. And then Megan and I have just come back from four years in Switzerland, where we were honored to serve as President Obama's ambassador. It was, uh, if you ever have a chance to be ambassador, take it. <laughs> it's, uh, it was nothing I volunteered for, but it was the most wonderful, incredibly interesting, and challenging experience. And the highlights for me were having a chance to help the relocation of Guantanamo detainees, people that Bush had decided were not terrorists, and especially two Uyghur brothers that you couldn't send back to China, and no other nation would take. <coughs> I had a chance to work for years on penetrating Swiss bank secrecy, not only to hold cheating Americans responsible, those who are cheating on their taxes, but also to make sure that terrorists couldn't hide their finances in Swiss banks. And another, you know, all politics is personal. The wonderful idea that if you change one life, you change the whole world. I was very proud of the fact we worked so hard on bringing the three imprisoned American hikers home from Iran. You know, I'm a biological Democrat. I was born a Democrat. And since I last ran for office, a few years ago, um, I have tried to stay very engaged. I was Howard Dean's treasurer. I chaired the Virginia, you know, so, so many of you were there to help. I continue to believe that if the campaign had started in Virginia rather than Iowa, that Governor Dean would have been the nominee. <laughs> the, I was John Kerry's Virginia chairman of the Virginia Edwards uh, Kerry campaign. I was Mark Warner's finance chairman. And then in December and January of 2007-8, my, Megan and my daughters and I knocked on every door of the every Democratic primary caucus voter, caucus voter in precincts one, two, and eight in Ottumwa, Iowa, for some guy named Obama. <laughs> and uh, we nearly froze to death, but we won. Um, and then when we came home, I spent virtually every waking minute in 2007 and 2008 raising money for Bre Senator Obama as his Mid-Atlantic Finance Chair. Look, we are all good Democrats. I see some, some of my friends, Laverne and Mark and Charnel and others, that I get to see a couple times a day now. <laughs> so we're all good Democrats and we're all running for the right reasons. But I believe that the voters of the 8th District will choose a leader who can be a powerful force for change from the very first day. I've spent my life trying to make Virginia better and America stronger. So from Richmond to Washington, D.C., from Northern Virginia to Europe, I bring the ideas, the energy, and the proven leadership to hit the ground running. I invite you to be part of our campaign. We can do this together, and we must succeed. I would love to take your questions, and uh, I'll do my best not to talk about the 47%. Sir.